the attorney for Ruby Frankie about a week ago. And I said, hey, anything coming down the pike you want to let us know about? Obviously, we've been following the case. And they said, we hope to have a statement in the next few weeks. And what a statement it was. We have just learned that accused child abuser Ruby Frankie is planning to enter into a plea deal in her criminal case. We're going to break it down. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Well, hello there, everybody. We are doing a special bonus Sidebar episode here on the weekend. You might be saying, why are we doing this here on the weekend? That is because we were hit with this bombshell on Friday night in the Ruby Frankie case out of Utah. And that is that according to Frankie's lawyers, she plans to enter into a plea agreement on Monday. Think about that. We've been covering this case for three months. So this is a major, major development and actually something that we talked about on a previous sidebar before we even get into that. Quick recap about the case and how we got here. So Ruby Frankie is the former creator and star of her now defunct YouTube channel called Eight Passengers. She started it with her husband, Kevin Frankie. It documented their lives. It documented their lives as parents of their six children. And while the channel was extremely popular and boasted over 2 million subscribers, it became very controversial when you hear some of the parenting techniques and advice of Ruby Frankie. However, listening to all of your comments and your feedback, I, I think I understand where some people are coming from. They're like, oh, the parents don't give their kids beds. And I totally agree with that. I know there are lots of children out there whose parents are neglectful. We got accused of child abuse when we sent Chad to Anasazi. Guess what? The first thing that they did was take a bed away. They, they don't have beds. So Chad slept on the hard ground for months and it's, you know, it's run by psychologists and therapists. And if not having a bed was psychologically damaging, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't have suggested that. And we have come to learn in our research and covering this case that Ruby and Kevin have separated. They've been not together for uh, over a year. And Ruby started working with a woman named Jody Hildebrandt, kind of like a self-help counselor. They worked together at this uh, organization known as Connections. Uh, Ruby was listed as a certified mental fitness trainer. So she started, so she's in this business with Jody, separated from her husband. And then you fast forward to August of this year. She and Jody, her business partner, are each arrested and charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse of Frankie's two young children. They were staying at Hildebrandt's place. Her 12-year-old son managed to escape Hildebrandt's home, ran to a neighbor who called 911. The boy was reportedly emaciated with wounds. There was evidence that he had been tied up. His 10-year-old sister, Ruby's daughter, was reportedly found in the house in similar condition. She was taken to the hospital to be treated for malnourishment. Ruby and Jody, they were each charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse, and it ranges from everything from physical torture to injuries that result in emotional harm to starvation and so on. And it was our understanding that each count, each one of those aggravated child abuse counts carried a max of 15 years in prison. Now, I spoke uh, with Brian Schnee, who's been following this case since the very beginning. Brian Schnee is a reporter and anchor from KUTV2 News. And we had been talking just, I think it was last week, about how prosecutors requested a court hearing for December 18th. It was called a waiver hearing, and it was to see whether a defendant in Utah waives the preliminary hearing. You know, the preliminary hearing is where prosecutors lay out their evidence to a judge to determine if there's sufficient probable cause to move forward in the case. A defendant in Utah has the ability, that's their right, to actually waive the hearing. And one of the things Brian and I speculated about was whether this could mean that there is a plea deal in the works. And he actually referenced an email he received from Ruby Frankie's lawyers. I do want to read you that email. Please. Because I do have it in front of me. So this was dated Wednesday, November 29th. So we're looking more than a week now when I last was able to hear back from Lamar Winward's um, crew there in St. George, Utah. Our firm will be making a statement in the upcoming weeks or so on Ms. Frankie's behalf. We are hopeful to reach a resolution shortly and we'll reach out with a statement. Mm. So when I heard waiver hearing, and then that's in my brain, 
waiver hearing could be more significant than anything else that we've seen so far and could, in theory, wrap this whole thing up. Okay, so now you fast forward to last night, Friday, December 15th, and Windward Law, again, the firm representing Ruby Frankie, releases a statement that she is planning to enter into a plea agreement. I'm going to go through the statement with you. We'll break it down. So first it says, Windward Law is making a statement on behalf of Ruby Frankie regarding the pending charges in the Washington County 5th District Court along with her thoughts about her current family situation. Our client is working with the prosecutor's office and anticipates resolving this matter quickly by entering a plea agreement with the court on Monday, December 18th. Wow. So that part is key, right? Because there seems to be an agreement that has been worked out between Frankie and the prosecutor's office. It's not like they're just putting off this offer. There has been negotiations behind the scenes. And I wonder if that means little to no prison time as a part of this. Why would Ruby agree to this? I got to tell you, I would be quite surprised if prosecutors would allow Frankie to stay out of prison altogether, given that they accuse her of starving and torturing her children. Now, it could be that they decided maybe to drop a charge or they don't feel that they have enough to prove a certain aspect of this case, or maybe they do have the goods. Maybe they can prove all six charges, but in the interest of saving time and money and the heartache of a trial, after all, It seems to me that her kids would have to testify against her, and that can be incredibly overwhelming and difficult for those young children. Maybe she decided to plead guilty to all of the charges, but her punishment maybe won't be as severe as multiple years in prison, multiple years behind bars. But that does lead me to the next point of this statement. It goes on to say, Ruby Frankie is a devoted mother and is also a woman committed to constant improvement. Initially, Ms. Frankie believed that Jody Hildebrand had the insight to offer a path to continual improvement. Ms. Hildebrand took advantage of this quest and twisted it into something heinous. Over an extended period, Ms. Hildebrand systematically isolated Ruby Frankie from her extended family, older children, and her husband, Kevin Frankie. This prolonged isolation resulted in Ms. Frankie being subjected to a distorted sense of morality shaped by Ms. Hildebrand's influence. Wow. So Ruby Frankie is officially turning on Jody Hildebrand. It seems to me that she may have agreed to be a witness against Jody Hildebrand at her trial, right? Testify against her. Now, I can't say I'm that surprised by that, considering in our coverage of this case, specifically when we had the opportunity to interview Jesse Hildebrand, Jody Hildebrand's niece, they said that they were abused by Jody and Those allegations are very consistent with what we just heard from this statement. And she would tell me all the time, if you just confess, I will stop. If you confess, I will stop, which is torture. Jody is very smart in how how she approaches her therapeutic modalities. Um, Because they are so extreme, if she were just to start out with those things, everyone would recognize it and they would be shocked and be like absolutely not but she's very subtle she's very subtle and she's very um, calculated so she strips you of identity she strips you of credibility and she isolates and shows she's saying everything that you say is a lie everything that you say is is manipulation you're manipulating everyone around you you're lying and destroying everyone's life so that idea of manipulation and isolation that is very consistent with what ruby is now claiming through her lawyers By the way, we're going to get back to this in a second, but honestly, this is really disturbing stuff. And the cases that we cover on Sidebar just show that the world is not always safe. It can be scary. And I actually want to take a minute then to talk now about the sponsor of this video, Morgan & Morgan. We always appreciate their support because one of the scariest things in life can be if you get hurt and you don't know what to do. So Morgan & Morgan is actually the largest injury law firm in America, and at a time when you're going to already have so much on your mind and to think about, they make it super easy for you. They've completely modernized the process because you submit your claim, you sign contracts, you upload documents, you talk to your whole legal team all on your phone. That's it. An attorney's going to review your case in eight clicks. They have 4,000 support staff that can help you too. That is just amazing to think about. And if you're thinking about price and you're wondering about it, well, you only pay them if you win. There's no upfront fee. 
So if you're injured and you want to join the over 3 million people that call them every year, you can submit a claim at forthepeople.com slash LC sidebar or by dialing pound law. That's pound 529 on your phone. Going back to Ruby Frankie, though, uh, this statement from the, her lawyer continues, and it says, quote, during Ruby Frankie's incarceration in Washington County Jail over the past few months, she is actively engaged in an introspection that has allowed her to reset her moral compass and understand the full weight of her actions. Miss Frankie is committed to taking responsibility for the part she played in the events leading up to her incarceration. Demonstrating a sincere dedication to personal growth and rehabilitation, she has actively begun the process by reaching out to members of her family. Through heartfelt apologies, she seeks to mend relationships and contribute positively to the healing journey of her family. So that signals to me a few things. First, from the legal point of view, it's kind of like a time-served argument, right? Because whatever deal she ends up working out with prosecutors, if someone looks at that and says, that doesn't seem like significant prison time, it seems based on this, um, this statement that she's saying, well, she's already served some time behind bars for what she did for these allegations. Now, from a human point of view, it's really a 180 from Ruby Frankie, who had been defending her parenting techniques for so long. Um, this idea that she's trying to be a part of her family again, understands what she did was wrong. But also we have to remember that as much as she seems to be accepting what she did, she's also accused of abusing her children and maybe feeling the weight of these charges, the gravity of the case, the gravity that she could spend years behind bars. So someone might be a little skeptical of what she's saying right now. But the next part of the lawyer's statement actually addresses Kevin filing for divorce. It says, quote, Ruby is aware that Kevin Frankie has filed for divorce. While she is devastated by this news, she acknowledges and understands his anger and reasoning. Despite the pain, she respects his decisions and remains hopeful that, with time, she can contribute to rebuilding trust and fostering understanding within their family. Ruby has offered her full cooperation to help the children reunite with their father. Again, wow. So it doesn't seem like this is going to be a contentious divorce, at least from that statement. And when we spoke to Kevin's attorney, Randy Kester, he said Ruby was probably expecting this divorce, but he said that the reason for the problems in the marriage was Jody. She was the one recommending to almost the, the, a majority of her clients that uh, in order to repair their families and repair their marriages, they needed to be separated. They needed to live apart because in, in her view, Kevin had uh, uh, Kevin was lustful and Kevin was greedy and Kevin was self-absorbed. None of which was true, but uh, through her uh, therapeutic manipulation, she convinced him that he had uh, characteristics and that if he stayed at home, he was going to poison the family. It's a little bit different than what we our prior conversation, because my understanding was it was Ruby's decision that Kevin lived separately. Now it sounds like it was Jody's decision, or is it Ruby through Jody, just so I understand? It was. It was it was Ruby through Jody because okay. Jody was giving okay. Ruby advice also that was not helpful. Yeah, again, so Ruby putting blame on Jody is consistent with Randy's account there. But in this statement, and it was kind of subtle, Ruby is going to be helping to make sure that Kevin, seems to me, gets custody of the kids, right? If that's the case, the way I read it, Maybe she is going to spend some time behind bars for a little bit and someone needs to take care of these kids. And finally, the statement ends with, quote, Windward Law recognizes the profound love that Miss Frankie holds for her children. And we are genuinely saddened that she found herself on this challenging path under the influence of Miss Hildebrandt. It is our firm belief that Miss Frankie is a devoted mother who unfortunately was led astray. She is sincere in her commitment to securing the best possible future for her family. And we remain hopeful that with the right support and understanding, she can navigate a path of healing and growth. Again, putting all the blame on Hildebrandt, accepting responsibility. I will say it is interesting that there is not a downright clear confession, a clear acknowledgement of what she did, right? Not a confession to abusing her children. And there's a reason for that, because as we know, plea deals they can always blow up the last minute. So her attorney has to be careful about public statements made before an actual plea deal is entered and accepted by the court. It has to be accepted by the court. Let's not forget that. 
But what this does do uh, for Jody is interesting. I mentioned how Ruby has this hearing Monday, but Jody has her waiver hearing scheduled for December 27th. Prosecutors asked for two separate hearings. Is she going to try to take a deal? Has she tried? Will prosecutors not accept a deal? Do they want to go for a full prosecution against Jody Hildebrand? Again, then you'd have the kids testifying, so that makes it difficult. But uh, is she the one that they really want to get? After all, there have been allegations uh, against Jody that she ruined families' lives based on her teachings and advice. If she is the top of this criminal master, if she's the criminal mastermind, then maybe they want to uh, ultimately prosecute her. And with Ruby's testimony, that would definitely change the game. But like I said, Ruby's hearing is scheduled for this Monday in St. George's 5th District Court. We will definitely follow what happens in this case. All right, everybody, that is all we have for you right now here on Sidebar, on this bonus episode of Sidebar. We very much appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time. Bye.